What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today I'm going to be going over a few of the important parts, well important in my opinion, from last night's weekly update, the TWAB from Bungie. Some seriously interesting questions put forward to Bungie via their latest stream. I'm going to cover them with the best answers. But hey people don't forget leaving a like on the video truly helps me out and if you take a second to do so I would love you forever. Ok so on to the video. Question. In regards to time to kill, it's a pretty popular opinion within the community that the time to kill should be decreased. Do you have any plans on looking into this issue further? The sandbox update was called the go fast update. Will the next update be called the kill fast? Thanks for listening. Josh, we know this is one of the big items the community would like to see. We're already coming at it from a few different angles. With update 1.1.4, we wanted guardians to feel more powerful and to get more chances to showcase that power. These changes included making weapons more lethal. The next big sandbox update comes with season three. As we buff a good chunk of the exotic weapons, these changes will be a direct response to exotics don't feel exotic enough. Some of these weapons are getting damage buffs that can have a direct impact on the average time to kill for an encounter. Question: Will Vigilance Wing be allowed to reign supreme in the Crucible or will there be any fine tuning in the near future? Josh, we are not planning an outright nerf to Vigilance Wing at this time. We don't believe slowing Vigilance Wing's time to kill in a world where players are asking for a faster time to kill is the right call. Instead, we should be adjusting more weapons up to a level where they can compete. I believe you'll find a few retuned exotics that can do that in the Season 3 exotic update. Question: When will we get the stream for Expansion 2 in Season 3? Like in the Go Fast update so far, excited to see what's next. Deej, we will be back on stream later this month to talk about the next content updates for Destiny 2. We'll show you where you're going next, who you'll meet when you get there, how you'll share new activities with your friends, and what you'll be able to chase in the Crucible to prove your poess. Question: I really wish D2's weapon system returns to primary, special and heavy. It was better than the current one. Is my wish reasonable? Josh. We know that you want more control over your loadouts. You can expect weapon slot changes in the future of Destiny 2. We are actively working on a new system right now and we will have more to show and tell this summer. Question: When can you tell us about your solutions for the loot system like random rolls, perks, mods, depth to weapons and armour and stuff like that? Josh, I'm no investment designer but I can tell you that we as a team know that you want more reasons to play. We know you want to be excited about the possibility of any given drop again. We know you want to look forward to hopping on night after night for a shot at something you want to get your hands on and that you look forward to the adrenaline rush when it finally happens. We are actively working to get there together. We'll talk more about our plans when they are in a playable state that we think is stable. Question, are there any set plans to introduce new elements, classes, subclasses or weapon types to the game in the near future? Josh, yes to some of these. From my desk right now I can look around and see new hotness on several people's screens. We'll be showing off a lot of this stuff in the months to come. That sounds absolutely epic, I cannot wait. Question, how did the Crucible team decide on random game modes instead of letting players choose what mode they want to play like we had in D1? Kevin, the biggest driver of that conversation was trying to improve matchmaking times and connection quality. Additionally, it allows us to better supply certain moods. As you've seen with the 1.1.4, we've reinforced these moods. Quick Play is now delivering the 4v4 low intensity that we intended for that playlist. Competitive is now driving further the 4v4 high intensity. The biggest driver is connection quality and connection times. More people in the pool means more good connections. In May, private matches are coming. At any point when you want to get a game of control together, you can do that. In terms of players asking to make the rumble permanent, we've absolutely heard that feedback. To be more specific, we've heard that, we understand that, and we've been having conversations every day since the launch of 1.1.4 about that. Hopefully we'll have more to say soon. Question: Are you looking back at Destiny 1 for inspiration, or are you trying to find a new way forward? What do you currently consider to be a high priority for PvE and PvP? 
Any hints for random rolls or a special slot? Pretty please. Josh, Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 are two unique and helpful data points. Neither game is perfect, both have plenty of room for improvement. It's hugely helpful to be able to directly compare and contrast the two and see what worked and what didn't. Ultimately the goal is just to make Destiny 2 to be the best Destiny we've ever made. Question. Why can't the mobility stat increase sprint speed? I'm a hunter, I need to ninja. Josh, our goal with 1.1.4 was to get back to more of the Destiny 1 style of movement, especially the movement you're working with mid-combat. Sprint speeds weren't changed for D2 and therefore it wasn't crazy high priority to hit those. That being said, we called it the Goal Fast update for a reason and it was absolutely one of the potential changes to test with on our list. As we dug into making changes to it, we ran into some technical challenges that kept it from being possible to get up in time to test with. It's something we will continue to consider in the future though. What I can tell you is we buffed standard movement quite a bit. Fun fact, any mobility value over 5 after 1.1.4 is faster than the max mobility base speed values in D1. We also returned increased air acceleration back to its D1 values as well. To me though, playing Destiny PvP after the 1.1.4 update being a hunter, I don't really feel a change in speed at all. I mean, it could be just me, the change could be in place, but for me, I feel as slow as ever. Let me know what you hunters think down below within that comments section. I'm looking up as a hunter, I'm seeing warlocks fly across the sky, titans fly across the sky, and there's me crawling along the floor. It amazes me how hunters should be the fastest class, but yet again, as it happened in D1, we have now become the slowest class. How is that, people? Someone explain it to me. Now we're going to move on and on to Rumble Changes and Iron Banner. Quoting Bongo right here, last week update 1.1.4 introduced the weekly Crucible playlist. For the first game type, Rumble served up some 8 player free for all combat where players had to watch their own backs because no one else would. Monitoring feedback throughout the week, we noted quite a few players reporting that the mod felt a bit crowded. We've tracked down PvP designer lead Derek Carroll to give us some feedback on the goals of the weekly Crucible playlist and what we can expect moving forward. Quoting Derek right here, With a week's worth of update 1.1.4 in the wild, the PvP team can take a step back and see how we did. One thing we like about the new rotating weekly playlist is that it gives us the ability to add things and make changes without shaking up the core of the Crucible. We'll be using that playlist to try out new mods and events in the future. Rumble came to Destiny 2 in a big way and depending on your tastes, you may have found it too big. We tend to agree. So the next time Rumble rolls around, you'll find a bit more room to breathe. We're lowering the player count to 6 and altering the spawning policy behind the scenes in an attempt to keep players more evenly spaced out. These changes are the first steps towards an even better player experience that we expect to drop when Season 3 begins. So everybody who complained about Rumble being overcrowded with 8 people, it's now been reduced to 6. Iron Banner's next appearance is an exciting one for us. In conjunction with the sandbox tweaks, we've made changes to the version of control you'll be playing in Destiny 2 to increase intensity and give players more choices during gameplay. Right off the bat, you'll see that there are no zones held by either team at match start. With 6 players on each team, you'll have more flexibility to decide your opening moves. Once you're capturing, you'll notice that the more players you have, up to 3 in a zone, the faster it switches sides. There's a risk reward here, as supers are more prevalent in version 1.1.4 and you don't want to be caught with all your eggs in one basket. If you participate in a capture, you'll get more super energy yourself, so grabbing zones is a great way to power up for your next big play. Until the Iron Banner is lit next week, please enjoy the auto chaos of mayhem, now with 25% more super powered insanity. With update 1.1.4, Iron Banner now features 6v6 action. All Season 2 Iron Banner weapons will be available from Lord Saladin through either reward packages or direct purchases using Iron Banner tokens. Iron Banner begins Tuesday April 10th and ends Tuesday April 17th. The game mode is Control. So that's something I do look forward to. 6v6 back in Destiny, gonna feel weird at first but it's something I definitely look forward to experiencing. Now Deej does go on in the update to mention the following, which is quite big news to be honest. If you follow the conversation that ricochets between the leaders of the Destiny community, and why wouldn't you, you may have heard that we've invited some of them to visit our studio. Later on this month we're hosting a community summit right here at Bungie. 
Now that our guests have a chance to break the story, we want to let you know what this moment means to us. So a bunch of content creators are going to see out of USA to give feedback on Destiny 2 going forward. This in my opinion is something they should have done a while back. It's also great news for the game. Some of the people I have seen who've said they are going are really outspoken and hopefully they tell the truth and not kiss ass. For the people wondering, no I wasn't invited. Does it bother me? Not a single bit. I couldn't have gone anyway due to being a father and so forth. But if you guys have been watching me over the downfall of Destiny 2, you guys know I haven't held back on what I've said. Yes, it comes out of love for the game, but in my opinion what I've said has needed to be said and you guys know I don't care if I get blacklisted. I've said this numerous times in the past, I probably am blacklisted. It is what it is. I will continue to speak the truth when needed and that's what I've been doing. Now what Bungie are doing here though is smart on both parts. I think most will see it. When your game's down and out and everyone's moved on, including most content creators who help build the community, you invite them to a free trip to Seattle to play the game early and spread that enjoyment to their audience. This in turn helps Bungie massively with their game. I just hope they spread the truth. I, like most of you guys, will be waiting to hear feedback on the future of the game. So let's hope the truth is said and it isn't overhyped. On that note guys, I am out. Thanks as always for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps me out. Again, thanks for stopping by and hopefully people, I will see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand.